Come on, amen. I like going to say that right now. Come on. Talk to somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what the gospel is about, telling people about Jesus. That's what I want to thank Diana and the team for going out. Come on, let's give them a hand for uh, encouraging to all of us to hear prophecy and the spirit to our hearts so our mind can activate what God said to us. Amen? It's a process. It comes, first of all, from God's voice. Prophecy comes in steps or in increments. It was a couple of years or three years when Shan, Pastor Shan got the voice of God before she made it uh, a point to have the women come in and confirm what God was telling Pastor Shan. So it was a God, the Holy Spirit, God's call and a confirmation from the two women. He talked about that in Acts chapter 2, verse 17. It talks about the end time. God's Spirit will be poured down upon his sons and his daughters, and they will get dreams and visions. And this is a big, great concern for me and for our church, is that we said we're making disciples in this house, which is God's house, and send you guys outside to spread your wings. Amen? Amen. Amen. There was some stuff that when you listen to every testimony, how prophecy and the voice, and Leslie, she not get out of the nest. You gotta kick her out of the nest. Because she was comfortable in the position she was in, but you gotta hear her testimony, because God gave her talent and position to use that talent into the gospel of Jesus. Amen. You gotta see and you gotta hear how God used your natural talents, and put you in a position that you're equipped for in such a time as this that God can use you for His glory. The prophecy of Pastor Sharon, what she heard at a given season, see, everything God does in season, it's just like this big wave, Pastor, we're catching. The sets come in seasons, the storm come in seasons. And when you gotta be ready and you gotta be in position to catch that wave, if you're out of position, you're going over the falls and you're going to talk to the, the rocks. <laughs> the reef. The reef got where you go, get rocks. The rocks, you can hear them underneath the water. They're moving away from them. That thing starts shifting. how God operates. God's force and God's position and power, when He hits the rocks, it starts to shift. By we're in the place of shifting in this church. And it's spiritual I'm talking about. I'm not I'm talking about physical shifting. I'm talking about spiritual shifting that God is using in certain specific times, geographically, using this little church inanically to do kingdom work. And we will start to hear the testimony of these women going out and reaching to the people that have been lost and somebody that needed a relationship or somebody is going through something that God is using to see. Like, like the Bible says, when they went to Donna Cooley, they was rejected in Pastor Shan's own territory. Jesus was rejected when he went back to his own town. Biblical. That's, that's I'm talking Bible. Jesus went to his own country, and wasn't in Donna Cooley, someplace in Israel. He went to his own country and he was rejected by his own people. He said, ah, that's only Pastor Shan. She worked at the school. She people are not looking in the spirit of you. This is the same thing they did with Jesus. They rejected his own people, rejected Jesus. This, he, the, he did, the, he did the, um, the lowest miracle, signs and wonder, was, on, was in his own town. This is why these guys had to get out of town, Lana Kule, go mile. This is where God has called them, as used by the spirit of, of, of Sister Kim. God was in that, that scenario, and it's all Bible, it's all biblical, how we operate and then how we, we work. If you didn't be rejected, remember, Jesus was rejected too by his own people. Amen? So you will be rejected. No get mad, no get, no. Keep the commandments. Love your people. Come on, somebody. We're not fighting flesh and blood. And it's funny how the testimony on our word is 
We as fabric together for this morning service. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. Father God, bless our work this morning. Protect us for an awesome testimony of the evangelist work, Father God, that you have raised up women and men to go out into our communities and around the world, wherever you send us, Father God, that we will raise our hand and say, Lord, send me wherever it is, Father God. It's your call, not my call. Father God, sometimes it seems impossible, but it's not impossible with you, Father God. We serve an oncoming God that does oncoming things that make you do oncoming things. So we got to trust God's process and follow the voice of God. Then we must start to see the signs and the miracles that follows the gospel of the Son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we must start to see family healed in Father God. We start to see people healed in the name of Jesus. We're going to see everything that is in us being removed by the power of the name of Jesus. Father God, family is going to be restored for the good. Blessings shall come down. We'll find favor, Lord, going in. We're going to find favor coming out. We're going to find favor in our bodies. We're going to find favor in our finances. Father God, we're going to have favor because we're doing kingdom work, Father God, for your kingdom. So, Father God, in it's your will, then you pay the bill. Father God, we know that it's your vision, Father God, that you have, we need the money and the resources to continue traveling around the world and around our community to spread the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. So bless your word, Father God, encourage us, Father God, that we look up to the author and finisher of our faith, that it is through you and through your word. We walk, Lord, Father God, not by sight, but by your word. It is by your faith, Father God, in you that pleases you. So, Father God, bless us this morning. Open up our hearts and let our minds be transparent of the word and the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask for this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we are talking about the mechanism. Like a couple of Sundays ago, we talked about the mechanism. How we, all of us, are operating together as a church and as a division. Every one of us has a call and a part, wherever it is. Either it's in evangelism, whether it's in your job, whether it's, in a, it's at the coffee shop, whether, whether, wherever you at the bus stop, wherever God has called you, that you can use the Word of God and God will use you in the manifestation of the Word because it is the spiritual realm we're fighting in our life. It's in the natural and the supernatural. There's good and evil we're fighting every day. The mechanism that the body of Christ is functioning under the Bible according to God's kingdom. When we talk about God's kingdom, we talk about God's kingdom principles. It is the principles that we operate in. We don't operate in fear and doubt, but we operate under the word of God, which is the kingdom word that God said at the beginning, it was the word and the word was with God. So the word is with you. And God understand the spirit that is in you, it surrounds you in the atmosphere that we are fighting good and evil. It is you that change the atmosphere, not the atmosphere change. Come on, somebody. You change the atmosphere when you're going out and doing evangelistic work and you will start to see the good and the evil that you know you are you're fighting the principalities of the earth. Good and evil. Reject it and receive. You gotta know the word. Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know the word. You walk in kingdom principles. And we're not walking with cockiness and arrogance, but we're walking with the authority and jurisdiction of power that God has commanded you that you speak and you will heal and you will bring back clarity to people's life. You will see stuff to change the atmosphere in not a fully mighty way ever because of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You change them. Yeah, you know, let's start. Let me talk about the devil. Amen? Amen. Because I know he's a spirit. Dynamic spirits. Demons are dynamic spirits. They are a person without a dirt body. body. So any spirit that is illegal to operate in your body, in your body, is in a position illegally, whatever it is. Sickness, whatever, fear, that is a spirit that comes against the power of the Word of God. Amen. Who else is trapped this morning? I get all excited when they hear these women. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. They're walking with authority. They're changing the atmosphere. Come on. It's not them. It's the name of Jesus. Yeah. The devil was running yesterday. And some of the devil, they never like, they want to reject them. Because some people, you got to understand, the principalities, we're not worshiping flesh and blood, but principalities are rulers of darkness in secret places. You cannot see spiritual stuff. 
And sometimes when you go there, you feel the spirit coming up your legs. You know that's the spirit of the devil. Yes. Amen. God reveal from hell that the spirit rises up on your legs. It's not the Holy Spirit. When you go something, oh, I feel the Lord. It's not the Lord, it's the devil. Amen. The Lord comes from heaven down on your head and it goes right through your body like electricity. And I'm not talking about skin burn or, or chicken box. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that goes through your body. It goes right through the marrow and the core of your bones and you feel this electrical baptism of fire. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. It's an uncommon feeling of the Holy Spirit that is in you, that's showing you that God's power that is in you and it surrounds you and the atmosphere you're in, that was got to run in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when I'm at home, stuff falling down. I was in Apollo and then all of a sudden the fan standing straight up. Fan standing straight up. No more wind. The thing fall down. The Lord is revealing there is something in my house. Come on, somebody. Amen. There's a spirit in my house. I'm scared of the spirit. Bring it out! Yeah. Where are you coming from? You know what I learned when they had Mommy Hughes Church? There was blessing these people, and this lady was acting like a devil, and she was demon possessed. There's laying her on the garden with five big horns, like Jack Rafferty, holding them down. They was flying off like flies. Oops. She was a skinny little with power, with dominion, you know, the dominion of the dominion of power of the spiritual world. She had legions on top of her. A skinny little lady was flying big connectors off of her spirits. So Mama Hill told the lady, where you came from, spirit? She said, I came in on the cat. You never see me. There was a cat who came in. Animals. Listen. Animals get spirits on top of them. They're not spirits, but they carry spirits. You remember when Jesus went to the mountain, he hear the leopard and the spirit said, Lord, can we go into the pigs? He said, go in the pigs. And the pigs committed suicide. It's a spirit came to kill, steal, and destroy. It's a spirit that killed the swines or the pigs. They ran off the cliff and committed suicide. So you got to remember, when I learned to Mama Hughes days, according to scriptures, that the spirit that came in in one cat, that would drop off the lady, was turned off all our canacas, was a spirit of legions. That means there's 3,000 to 4,000, 6,000 spirits on top of one lady was turned every Hawaiian off. Off of Mama Hughes. Uh, spirits we're not fighting flesh and blood but the principalities of the air amen. amen some of you oh i'm not like going there you heard of the first thing i give giving you encouragement you change the atmosphere not the atmosphere change you you're a child of the king you gotta know that god is spirit is in you god is not over there god is not over there god is not the mind god is in me amen. god is in you Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you walk with authority, jurisdiction authority, you can command sickness according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Every sickness, every disease, every dynamic spirit, God said, I give you dominion and power. You gotta know the disciples got the same power that God has given you this day. Amen. Hallelujah. The mechanism of the spiritual realm. The spiritual world, according to spiritualism, that the world realm is inhabited by spirits, good and evil. evil. You gotta know who you're dealing with. Amen? Amen? There's many voices in the world, but not every voice is significant in your life. This is why sometimes we need opinions. We're gonna ask Pastor Bird, we're gonna ask somebody that, Pastor Bird, what about this? We need your advice. Oh, I gotta, gotta say, let's get the commandments. Yeah. No secret. What do you think we to do is love God with all our heart and not this uh, religion or anything else because you guys remember our last Bibles uh, we had like two, three weeks ago our sermon that we talked about Saul in Acts chapter, Acts, Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 12 or 13. Saul was killing Christians. He had legal documents to in religion that was killing Christians and then Jesus went blind him had to stop him in his tracks God had to stop us in our tracks and have a relationship with the one and true living God right? 
Can I get an amen? God wants to separate religion and culture, and there's only one culture. God's kingdom come, God's will be done in our life as it is in heaven, and God wants it to be done on earth first. God needs you to do evangelist work, do pastoral work, wherever you are. It doesn't have to go out. You can do it right at your job. Thank you, Lord. What's Clyde Nahulu? I had one guy, one inmate, he see me at La Marca, hey, Pastor Clyde. He said, Clyde Nahulu, you're doing Bible studies at his job. I went, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God had to stop lighting his tracks. I went through several times. But God is merciful. The one time that I remember, they tried God on more side, he could have been He could have been supposed to be dead, but God kept him alive. God had to stop him from what he was doing in the world. Then the last time that he had, and he had to go chill. This God stopped him in the trash when he found a relationship with Jesus Christ. God knows how to get your attention. Come on, somebody. Amen. God knows how to get your attention. God used the famine to get the people to come back to the cross. God used pestilence because we keep on doing our will and not God's will. Come on, somebody. Help me. Amen. Amen. You let me bless. Do God's will. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Let when brand new come, get free. Just talk to Jesus and do His will. Amen. Let when get free house, just talk to Jesus and do His will. To so start evangelizing, you tell people about Jesus. That if it's His will, He will pay the bill. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If it's will. Soon, and I'm praying very soon, the documents that we got after the after the men's conference, I have documents and papers that is is, is um, certified to officials of men. Five billion dollars. We could build houses for the prisoners. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We got five million dollars in documents in the bank that people gave to this little church in Abakuli. But it's, uh, you gotta understand, God always use one people to bless you. God always use one person to bless you. All you gotta do is doing kingdom work. All you do is gotta believe. Do Bible studies at your job. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen, brother Clyde. Praise the Lord, brother Clyde. He knows who's telling me he was blessed when he seen you. He knows. Christopher. Amen. Christopher first day in La Maca, when he seen Clyde, he was impressed and he was blessed because he stopped to see the signs and the miracles in Clyde's life. Amen. It's the same signs and miracles going to happen in his life. He's going to start to work for Akamai Rufi with 10 of them. So we know that God is already shifting bricks and moving blocks around for your good. Come on, somebody. Amen. God is shifting blocks. I'm not talking about blessing blocks, but the blocks that is blocking you from getting to your breakthrough. Come on! Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Jesus. We need a break too this morning. Come on, yes, somebody. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we look at the mechanism of the spiritual realm that we are blessed today. God already has established His will in our life. Go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he had called unto him that his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits and cast them out, and to heal all manners of sickness and all manners of disease. Amen. <coughs> Today we get more than enough manners and disease than ever seen before than we had in the past. What that means that there's an overwhelming spirit that's coming with disease and sickness attacking the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. Right. Amen. Amen. That's it. If you eat soap, uh, scorpions and poison, you said pray. Nothing will harm you. 
So how can anything harm you? How can you pray for you for pay? You pray for you food. No, pray. pray for your food. Amen. That nothing attached to your body illegally. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 So we still got to eat healthy. We're going to eat chocolate all day, 24-7. Right? Amen. You can eat Hawaiian salt all day, 24-7. Amen. Amen. The stuff that is affecting us, the doctor said, you can eat salt. That's killing you. I love salt. <laughs> You always get attracted to the things that feed you spiritually and physically. Right. Come on, somebody. We need wisdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. You gotta eat right. How many of you need some pure? Oh, by the heart. I can plug that in. Oh, I get some cards that you can lose weight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God commanded the powers of the enemy to be broken off of our home, broken off of our mind. Broken off of our relationships. Come on, somebody. You know the devil's gonna come between you and your relationship. You gotta understand principality is the hell. We're talking about culture. That's why it's very important when I counsel with people. I gotta know where your father came from, where your mother did, and your uh, uh, and, and the other side as well, and the other male and the female, because the two different culture and two beliefs and two abuse comes together, you're gonna get a clash. So we gotta understand, we've got to remove those spirits. And the, and the culture and remove all of those symptoms so we as um, we as husband and wife can come to common ground if not we won't scrap we gotta take away culture and the things that we was raised up and remove all those drugs and alcohol and, and pornography that is broken up life can you hear me anybody can you hear me anybody it's been broken up people for um, for years and years, from generation to generation, it is things that alters the mind that separate us from the Spirit of God. Some of you, you're real quiet. Pastor, you should go. Or when you drink one beer, it's like fire water. Now you extract. Come on, somebody. I ain't look at nobody. I'm talking about me, baby. No, I'm talking about the spirit that is on top of you. We command that spirit to be broken off of your life, off of your relationship, off of your mind. Amen. You now make strongholds and break every cause and bands of wickedness and darkness. Yes, amen. We shake off every spirit of the illegal place in your life. Come on, somebody. Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2, 6. And I'm going, to camp in, I'm going to be camping in Ephesians for a while, if you don't mind. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And had risen us up together and made us seek together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. He says that Jesus, he gave a supreme power in agreement with Jesus Christ that all of us are seated in heavenly places that anything we speak, anything we command, any spirits and sickness, that we are in heavenly places where God is intercessory. He said his kingdom come on earth. So in kingdom work, we need to open our mouth and speak to the spirits and sickness and God will remove those things from your life. We are seated in heavenly places, church. Come on. Amen. We're talking about we came from heaven. We operate in heaven. We're the only legal person with a dirt body, with a spirit of God that is in you to operate on earth properly. The only way we can operate properly in the spirit of God is knowing that this is the good and the evil. We're fighting this realm of spirits in our life and on this earth. Satan was cast down in, in, in Revelation chapter 12. He was cast down from heaven and he is down here and he's roaming this place. We cannot see him, but you can see the effects of him in people's life and how sickness and disease and all these things, strongholds and principality of the ill of wicked places, he's trying to bring down his people and he's trying to destroy relationships. And we got to understand kingdom principles. We operate in a spiritual realm between good and evil. Amen? Amen. 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 Some of you think it's a book directed, but you know, some of you need to hear this again. Amen. Yes, amen. And again. And again. And when you get the breakthrough, then you go, oh, I got it now, Pastor. Jesus. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. We play a role as believers in relation to God's kingdom or his heavenly presence. So this is this one. In Ephesians. He's talking about this is how we're gonna start with this this morning, with this verse, first of all. Go to Ephesians chapter one. We'll be kept in Ephesians or morning for if you don't mind. Amen. Ephesians chapter one, verse twenty. Which he wrote in Christ when he risen, risen him from the dead and seated him at his at his own right hand in heavenly places. We're going to talk about kingdom principles and heavenly places. You got to understand, we operate under God's kingdom. I'm under. We are seated on the right hand side in heaven with Christ Jesus that came and died us from the old man to redeem us to the new man that we operate in the spirit of excellence knowing God's word that you have power and dominion over principalities of the air and sickness and wickedness that God has given you direct um, authority from heaven that all of us are up in heavenly places city with Christ Jesus as well when you became a born again tongue talking bible believing young man and child of the king you become the woman and child of the great i am that you operate in god's kingdom and when you operate under the principles of god into his word he has given you principles and power in heavenly places who can be against you if god is with you Amen. nobody I don't care what you're going through. I don't know what you're facing. When you get down on your knees and you talk to God about your relationship and your finances, stop grumbling and crumbling and talking about all these other stuff and what she said and he said and she did. Don't talk about those stuff. Talk to Jesus. Amen. He will speak to the mountain and he will move the mountain Thank for you. you. Jesus. Don't grumble about the mountain. Don't grumble, don't gossip about your mountain. You need to speak in the name of Jesus Amen. through that mountain and that mountain will be God. Hallelujah. If you're not going to speak to the mountain, then you're going to run the mountain. <laughs> grumbling and murmuring for 40 more years. So grumbling about God, something they put mountains in your way so you get to the other side, but you're not getting to the other side because you're still looking at the mountain and the mountain become a curse instead of a blessing. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. However you look at the mountain, it becomes a curse. Or it becomes a blessing. Amen. He said, speak to the mountain. Amen. You don't say gossip about the mountain. Jesus. Make it even. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, it talks about the kingdom principles of heaven and heavenly places. Come on, somebody. Yes. God has risen up Jesus Christ from the dead. And now because of him, because of his glorious body, he sits on the right hand side of the God and came from places that yes. we have operating in heavenly realm. It, it only can show us that both we are operating both in the good and the evil because God is up in heaven. He sent down Lucifer, the loser, back on earth. So we're fighting principalities of the air. That's why God gave us angels. God, Jesus had to go back to the Father and sit on the right hand side of the Father because Jesus is the one that intercessed for us. He's the one that anything we ask in his name, he's moving on your behalf. Even though you might not see it, you might not see that uh, when you guys going out and doing evangelistic work, but God's going to be operating under the supernatural Supreme Court in heaven, where we are sitting in heavenly places, that God's going to switch things around because you have already believed in me, you walk in faith, and we will start to see the signs in the ones. Amen. We will start to see God moving supernatural. Come on, come on. Don't give up, look at your neighbor. Don't give up! Don't give up! Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't give up? Because God just always remember. Right when you give up, God is just ready to release a blessing and a breakthrough. But you gave up, so He cannot continue blessing you because you gave up in a critical time, the geographic in a place, and in this place, right now, this morning. Geographic is ready to be a breakthrough, release a, a blessing upon your life, but you gave up. Man. Don't give up. Look at your neighbor. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. When we talk about the heavenly realm, we can refer that to both angelical and dynamic activity. Angelical and dynamic activity. When we talk about heavenly realm, 
this realm, it operated with heaven, with, uh, with principalities and spirits of all, all of us. We wrestle with good and bad every day in our life. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen? So you've got to train your eyes and your heart and your mind to be one. You've got to watch out for the things that has easily deceived you. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. What is your tree? What are you looking at? Look at you. Oh, tree, how are you? The tree was in a garden. Amen? And the same tree, I don't even wrap yourself in. How come you get the, you said to who told you you was naked? Right. We believe in a lot. Come on, somebody, help me. Right? Yeah. Adam and Eve believe in a lot. They wrapped themselves with the same tree that they were in the circle was in the tree. Naked. So God took away the tree and he gave them, he slaughtered one animal on, or he slaughtered a lamb, whatever it is, and he wrapped Adam and Eve with a goat or a sheep. Why? Because God has a covering. Come on, somebody. Amen. Even though they were seen, they were naked, and they never see no sense of evilness. But now because of evilness, we're all naked. I look at you naked, I know I'm naked. It's like God gave me on clothes to wear. Come on, somebody. Amen. Clothes only hide in our shame. What is in you? Oh, yeah. oh, it's only covering, huh? You know, we talk about character, right? Temptation monitor your character. Who are you? Come on, somebody. Amen. Who are you when the city come and tempt you? Sure. Ooh, hallelujah. As flesh and blood humans, we have very little understanding of the spiritual world. We cannot see or hear or touch whatever the Bible assumes for that this world is surrounded by spiritual strongholds and spirits that are good and in evil. And in our, so we can look at the insight of the Word of God. In this world, we cannot see, but we can understand what, the, what God tells us about it in, without going first to knowing that God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And the only way we can understand God's word is to know that who he is. That the Bible assumes that in a spiritual world that we live in, and that we need to go to the word in order to know the truth. Go with me to John chapter 4 verse 24. John chapter 4 verse 24. It says that God is a spirit. First of all, we have to see who God is. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. truth. So in existence, in and out, in the existence is outside of the bounds of time and the space, His home is called heaven. Jesus is not here anymore. He operates in heavenly places. He's sitting 